So then it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, the next speaker, Fatima Ertesari. Uh, Fatima uh, is an acknowledged poet from Iran uh, and internationally. Um, in 2015, uh, she received a severe punishment. Uh, she was sentenced uh, to um, uh, 11 years of prison and for 99 lashes for her poems. Uh, and today she, um, um, she lives in uh, Lillehammer, city of um, refuge, uh, with the ICON residency program. So I'm very much looking forward to her hearing from Fatima and uh, about her story. So please give her a hand. Uh, hi everyone, <laughs> I'm Fatame and I'm glad to be here with you today and uh, at first I will introduce myself and uh, Sayyid Mehdi Musabi uh, to you in a short time and then we will read some of our poems and uh, sorry for my broken English. Uh, it might be strange for you to introduce, to introduce two poets at the same time, since some of our events, like prisons, escape from Iran, and the type of our uh, poetry we are working on uh, are the same. I prefer to talk about them at the same time. Moreover, I have been a student of Mehdi. <laughs> Uh, I've made this workshop for a long time and my artistic life has linked to him. <coughs> Sayyid Mehdi Musavi was born in 1976 in Tehran, the capital of Iran. His reputation in Iran is for poetry, stories, songs, as well as literature workshops that he has been holding for free for 14 years. Many Iranian young people and writers came to his workshop for a while. Of course, he holds a PhD in pharmacology, like many Iranian artists who uh, unfortunately have to study non-artistic majors uh, for financial results. Uh, Mehdi has published 13 books, including 11 poetry collections, a novel, and a book on Persian poetry technique. Most of these books were rounded up from the Iranian market, and their uh, sale in Iran is uh, prohibited by government. Most of his books were published underground in Iran, uh, and uh, are being sold by street vendors illegally. 
In Iran, in order to publish a book, it should be submitted to a Ministry of Culture before publication. Uh, they read the book and uh, indicate the part of must be deleted, the, the parts must be changed, or even announce that the book is completely unpublishable. Uh, several of Mehdi Musavi's books did not get permission to publish by the Ministry of Culture and have never been published. And unfortunately, the 13 published books have been gathered from the book stories after many censorship and several times being reprint, rep, reprinted. However, his latest novel, this pictures of his books, and uh, his latest novel has been published in abroad, but in Iran, the electronic version and its illegal copies are being printed among the people. Uh, one of the reasons for the reputation of Mehdi Musavi is his poems sung by variation singers, many people who are not crazy about reading book, re about books are familiar with their lyrics while listening to this music. However, most of this music uh, in Iran are underground and ex uh, accessible through the internet. The label of Mehdi Musavi in Iran is the father of postmodern Ghazal. Ghazal is a traditional Persian poetry template, including rules like, uh, like rhyme and read. Uh, it's uh, about our workshop in Iran. Uh, that's what I said, and uh, I will come back, maybe. <laughs> Uh, Ghazal is traditional Persian poetry template, includes ru rules like rhyme and read. Mehdi added postmodern contemplation and poetry techniques to his template and localized that. Uh, this poetry jar has many uh, opponents and adversary among the old generation of Persian poets and also Iranian government. But, at the same time, it has many fans among the younger generation. The poet's book, um, of, it, the poet's book of this genre are mostly sold in several editions. This is traditional uh, template of Ghazal. This poetry drum did not separate the traditional of Persian poetry while talking about the updates, problems, and pains of Iranian society in a new way. This can be the reason of welcome this poetry genre. Now, many poets in Iran write postmodern ghazal. Even sub, uh, subcultures and splits have been created for this. For this. However, some criticists do not like its linguistics Linguisticism and table breaking uh, labelous point of view of the approach of this genre to the contemporary Iranian language, and they consider them as the weaknesses of this poetry style. One of the problem of postmodern Ghazal is the lack the lack of uh, transference of the beauties and. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I cannot do two words at the same time. <laughs> but the problem of postmodern Ghazal is the lack of transference of the beauties and its implications after translating because it uses of I indigenous capacities, language game, and read or music of work, which has made it impossible to transcend to the boundaries of Persian speaking country. Mehdi also created workshop of creative writing in Iran. 
in different cities like Mashhad, Tehran, and Karaj. The aim were increasing creativity and uh, pushing the younger generation to study more, and also cultural, cultural change of the society more than a particular poetry in addition to, to in the indirect teaching of the techniques and principles of poetry and story. Humanities, science, such as philosophy, soci sociology, and psychology were being taught in these workshops. The membership was also free. The Iranian government strongly disagreed with this meeting and closed the decision several times. So you can uh, also <laughs> see some pictures of our workshop. <laughs> and my friends also who are living in Iran. Uh, literature. So the hundreds of people 
uh, gather in a hall for a weekly poetry, uh, weekly poetry session, just, <laughs> just a simple poetry session. The Iranian government is afraid of the influence of literature. Along with this, we had a lot of fun among the young, younger generation and its worried dictatorship regime. Because they oppose opposes any kind of gathering and the creation of independent NGOs and groups. Our literature workshop were rounded up many times and we were going to have it in our homes secretly. Why we just spoke about literature, criticism, and philosophy, and sociology. I think it's funny for you. Our books were not permitted to publish, and those were published with, censor with, uh, with censorship would round it up after a while. Our blogs and websites were filtered in Iran. The government parliament published our private photos on the national television, radio, websites, and governmental news agencies. And they were trying to destroy us with names and labels, such as prostitute, gay, devilish, spy of foreigners, Volga, and insulting saints. Since most people in Iran hate government, so this made us more popular. <laughs> After 2009 and the beginning of the peop people's uprising against the Islamic Repu Republic called the Green Movement and their severe crackdown on the street, pressure on independent artists was increased, particularly poets of the postmodern Hazel, who were mostly standing by the people and defended human rights in their poems and writings, who were narrators of people killed or imprisoned. This pressure, this pressure ultimately led to our arrest in 2010 and began a long interrogation after they attacked our homes and arrested us and seized all our, 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 our in instruments and writings. But given that <coughs> there was no much evidence against us, these interrogations ended with our commitment as well as our denial of social media and the closure of our literature workshop. Even after this happening, the pressure of government media and the repeated summonses by the government and making many restrictions for us. We did not intend to leave Iran because we needed to brace in the Persian language. We also had to, t had to touch the pain and problems of our country closely. Then we could rip represent that in our works. <clears throat> in Iran, the presence of women, women in a sports stadium is prohibited, as Marian said. A photo of mine that I was dressed in man's clothing and makeup along with Mehdi at the stadium was published. So we were summoned, summoned uh, and interrogated again, putting a simple poem about the problems of women, poverty, divorce, etc. In, on internet caused the summoning and being forced to respond to the security agencies and governments. In Iran, the poetry of social problems is blackwashing. Saying of women's problem is feminist, actually, <laughs> and feminist activity is propaganda against the system and may lead to the imprisonment of an artist. At the same time, a singer called Shahin Najafi, who had previously performed a number of, uh, a number of poetry of mine and Mehdi, 
sang a song called Nahi, which in the view of government and religious people inside Iran was an insult to one of Shia Imam. They got fatwa for Shahim Najafi and set up for his killing. This, this gave the IRGC excuse for further pressure and defeat. We were accused of working with him. In late 2013, the IRG force attacked our home. They seized all of our stuff and transferred us to a solitary confinement blindfolded. We passed 40 days of interrogations and some kinds of physical and mental torture since that night. They tried to screw down in our writing, our emails, our photo, our diaries, to find something against us. When they did not find something, they tried to persuade us mandatory to write and admit to their words by persecution. After 40 days, by international pressure and the support of artists from Iran, and uh, other countries. We were bait for free on our, on our bulk uh, until we issued a court sentence. The court took about two years. During this time, we were barred from attending literature meeting or going to cultural place. The publisher who was willing to publish the book of Mehdi was murdered suspiciously. Our interrogators rang and threatened us to murder. In court, the judge, instead of hearing our defamation, was, reprimand was reprimanded. Even at the last court session, the judge read the charge against us while they have not listened to our defense and our law lawyers. However, a few months later, I was sentenced to 11 and a half years prison and 99 lashes, and Mehdi to nine years imprisonment and 99 lashes. This sentence confirmed in the appeal court later. Our main charge was the text of our lyrics and the defense of freedom, the rights of minorities, minorities, raising social, uh, society's problem, expressing taboos, defending women's rights, and criticizing the traditional of community. The other reasons for this sentence were holding literary workshops, collaborating with underground seniors, communication, communicating with human rights organizations, and reading poetry in abroad. The lashes were for shaking hands with the opposite sex pe people, Persian. That is quite common in, among the people in Iran. They also eliminated our, all our poems, stories, themes, and uh, ma manuscripts forever. So we have no copies of many of them. After issuance of the verdict, After issuance of the verdict, it's less and uh, not having life security even after prison if is finished. We decided to leave Iran. Due to being famous and also our homes and our phones being con uh, controlled by the government, we made up our faces and ran away illegally. We had a lot of problems on the way, <laughs> but now we have no time to tell. However, we arrived to Kurdistan, Iraq. We were hiding for a while there, but due to influence of Iranian corps in Iraq, we again had to flee. We went to Turkey with supports from Kurdish smugglers. <laughs> Eventually, we arrived in Turkey. 
and ourselves to, uh, we arrived in Turkey and uh, introduced ourselves to, to the UN CHR in Turkey due to the proximity, proximity to Iran and the uh, uh, and the treats we had to change our city in and uh, <laughs> in the end <laughs> which the help of the icon, we were issued a temporary passport and visa, and we were transferred to Norway. <laughs> Called Norway. <laughs> this, this was a summary of our life. <laughs> However, the real story of our life actually happens in details. Description of suffering and hopes. Description of the fight and fail and start again. Living, living in Norway is full of security and tranquility. But the story of our life in Iran until we arrived here is a trailing movie which has many up and down. I think it would be an incredible and fascinating story, but it is, it's important that we are with you today and We've come to read our poetry. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Fatima. You, would you like to sit here and we can take some questions? It's a very powerful story and it's so, so strong to listen to. I'm sure there are questions from the audience. Anyone would like to ask Fatima a question? It's difficult to see from here. <laughs> for your presentation. Um, and since nobody else was asking a question, I, I would just like to hear your uh, reflections on future. Are you, are you with us forever? Are you going to learn Norwegian? Um, and things like that. And also, I have a desire. You know, the, 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 uh, the walls of language are very high. You know, they are absolute. There isn't... Uh, you can absolutely not understand the language you don't understand. And there is a book by the Iranian woman who won the Nobel Prize. What's she called? Shirin Abadi. Yes. Her book is translated to Norwegian. And I read it in Norwegian, of course. And uh, it was like a revelation. It was like putting your nose into another world, mm -hmm. you know. By, by the details of how she described colors and smells, you know, it was like um, seeing a culture that we absolutely do not have here in Europe. And, and just through the simple, this was a political book she wrote, but just through the way, her description of the color of a brown jersey um, opened up a kind of, um, um, view, small view into another culture, and so that was my desire. You know, if if that could be more open to us, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now uh, we are here as a guest writer and also refugee. So we are going to uh, to a school for learning Norwegian <laughs> and. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to learn. And uh, yeah, it's so difficult because the culture is totally different. Uh, at the first we arrived in Norway, <laughs> we shocked, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> and all places full of snow, freezing weather, and uh, everything was 
closed and cold, but we were in safety. Uh, you know, we feel that because uh, after after we leaving, um, after we left in we left Iran and came to Turkey, uh, we didn't feel this feeling, this safety, because the Turkey was was not. Yeah, uh, but Norway, yeah, <laughs> but yes, it's, for, it's very difficult for us to write even, and uh, we try to breathe in Farsi, breathe in Persian, breathe in uh, our country, even, 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 very, <laughs> even we are so far from our country, but we try to be there. I, I don't know, can I uh, <laughs> transfer my idea, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we understand what you mean. Any other questions? I don't have a question. I just <laughs> am very happy to see you here in Norway. Uh, I actually wrote about you when you were in prison, and I was, um, I didn't know you were here. <laughs> so, <Thank you. laughs> very short, because they didn't allow an article or anything. But it was a very short notice about you in the Norwegian paper when you were in prison. And yeah. uh, I want to say it's, uh, even short uh, writings are effective. Because when uh, we were in prison, uh, after the, uh, after, the, the interrogators uh, knows about uh, the news uh, in the world that that was about uh, about us. They try to fast process and they try to uh, be better <laughs> with us. And the interrogate the tortures was. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Hmm. You're very welcome. Thank you. So thank you. You're very welcome to know. I think there was a question over here as well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. I wonder. I'm concerned about you know also this language and identity and emotions and to keep alive uh, those things, because I know that many immigrants, they forget many things that maybe should be remembered and shared to others. And I wonder, do you have any milieu, you Iranian prone uh, poets, to, to share experiences and to encourage each other, you know, and also ways to share it to a Norwegian audience? Uh, actually, I wrote, uh, as I said, I wrote a book uh, about, uh, it's, it's like a diary, but not a real diary, it's a polygenic book about my memories uh, in, in prison, when, when I was in prison, in conf confinement, solitary. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to find a translator to translate that to Norwegian or maybe English. But uh, yeah, I'm, and I, I also try to make a film about smugglers and uh, people who uh, who had to uh, leave Iran illegally by uh, on 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 uh, actually, it was. I cannot find the word, but <laughs> uh, but it was it, it uh, was not done. Yeah, and uh, we want to. We 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 like to share our uh, experiences, and uh, like like here, we can share these stories to uh, other activism. Maybe they can do something more. <laughs> But uh, unfortunately, we didn't find uh, translators until now to translate our works to Norwegian or English. Hmm. Uh, so I have a question as well. You mentioned um, uh, 
that you will link to the green movement, the movement that uh, started after the election in 2009. And I see you have the green uh, ribbon around your, your wrist. Could, could you say something about how, um, how the movement is working today and your link to the movement today? Uh, actually, our leaders, uh, uh, that's, uh, they, they are arrested, home arrested. In, in, in house arrest. House yeah. arrested. And uh, we, we had hoped to the new president uh, can do something for release them, but he couldn't actually. He, I, I think he, don't, he, he doesn't want to do anything about release them. Mm. And they are sick and they, are, they have... They have not good situation there, and uh, about uh, green movement, we have just journalists journalism that uh, write about them, uh, but illegally and uh, not I mean not illegally underground. It's uh, they prohibited to write anything about this movement. If they write, uh, they should go to prison. And uh, we have these signs uh, just, just to remind, uh, remind us, remind ourselves, just, just to not forget this happened, this happening. But uh, I think it doesn't work. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and we will hear from your um, uh, from your poetry later today as well. So uh, please give a hand to Fatima. Thank you. And sorry for my. <laughs> Thank you. I should say sorry for my broken English again. <laughs> no, it's perfectly fine, your English is very good. So, a uh, little misunderstanding uh, there. Uh, there will be poetry reading now, as far as I understand. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we will have some uh, uh, poems uh, read by uh, Mehdi Musavi, and uh, uh, while the poems are being read in, uh, in Persian, uh, we will have the English, English translation shown, so that we can follow um, the reading. Hi everybody, uh, I'm beginning with a uh, two short poems. Ejaze hast ke isme tura sida bezanam Ejaze hast ke isme tura sida bezanam Be ishqe qabliye yek mert pushte pa bezanam 
اجازه هست که عاشق شوم که روح هم را میان دست عرق کرده تو تا بزنم دوباره بچه شوم بی بهانه گریه کنم دوباره سنگ به جمع پرنده ها بزنم دوباره کنج اتاقم نشسته شعر شوم و یا نه یک تلفن به خود شما بزنم نشسته ای و لباس عروسیت خیس است هنوز منتظری تا که زنگ را بزنم برای تو که در آغاز زندگی هستی چگونه حرف ز پایان ما جرا بزرم دوباره آمدی تا که آشقت باشم و من اجازه ندارم عزیز جا بزنم سه کارگر وسط شعر راه افتادند یکیش رو به خیابان نگاه کرد و گریست یکیش گفت به پیکان خستش که بیست یکیش اسم کسی را یواش برد که نیست سه کارگر وسط شعر راه افتادند یکیش عکسی شد توی دست های سیاه یکیش با چمدانی قدم گذاشت به راه یکیش فکر زنش بود توی زایشگاه سه کارگر وسط شعر راه افتادند یکیش زل زده شد توی چشم های پلیس یکیش قایم شد توی دست مالی خیس یکیش زن را برداشت رفت پیش رئیس سه کارگر وسط شعر راه افتادند یکیش مست شد از حسرت کمی شادی یکیش رفت فرو در قمی خدا دادی یکیش مشت گره کرده شد در آزادی سه کارگر وسط شعر را افتادند یکیش رفت به دنیای آرزو و کتاب یکیش رفت در آغوش دختری در خواب یکیش رفت خیابان در انتظار جواب سه کارگر وسط شعر را افتادند یکیش را سر میدان اولی کشتند یکیش را سر میدان دومی کشتند یکیش را سر میدان سومی کشتند تنکیو غیر یک سقف و چند بچه خوب هیچی از خدا نخواسته ای بی دهان بی سؤال یک گوشه زنده ای مصدا نخواسته ای هیچ چیزی عوض نخواهد شد ما زنان به پا نخواسته ای سالها می شود که یک دل سیر گفتگو کرده ای با واژن سالها می شود هویتمان چرخ خورده است در, سر دا در تن دامن سالها توی آشپزخانه آب کوبیده ای در هاون دلمان مین مخفی در خاک تنمان صحنه است از جنگ خون شنیدیم از صدای نوار گریه کردیم زیر آهنگ هیچ کس از خودش نپرسیده 
چرا یک عمر که دلم تنگ سقف نمی کشد یواش یواش بچه ها می روند از خانه زندگی می کنیم در تن خود مثل در سرزمین بیگانه ما زنان نشسته در هیچی خیره به مرگ ناامیدانه فشار سر به زمین از فشار بیخوابی صدای جیغ تو در پس زمینه آبی فشار سر به تو خاطرات بدبختم فشار میدهدم شب چقدر سرسختم صدای جیغ تو و خون و بوی اشک و گاز فشار سر به زمین زیر چکمه سرباز فشار دادن ماشه میان ابروها فشار خون وسط سر فرار ترسوها فشار دادن دستی میان دستی سرد تمام شب کسی اسم مرا صدا می کرد فشار بغز میان گلوی جرخورده صدای جیغ تو در گوش آدمی مرده فشار زندگی و زخم ها و رد هایش فشار قبر به تنهای جسد هایش فشار مشت به دیوار و خوردن فریاد صدای جیغ تو در زوزه های وحشی باد فشار سر به زمین در فشار فشار دکمه برگشت زندگی به عقب به باز کردن یک پنجره به سمت نور دوباره پا شدن دست جمعی از ته گور فشار دادن دستی میان دستی داغ صدای خنده ما توی خانه توی اتاق صدای آرامش حرکت منظم نبز به روز خوب تری توی پس زمینه سبز معبدی باش انور تبت معبدی باش انور تبت تا در این شهر زائرت باشم برکی باش آخر دنیا تا که مرغ مهاجرت باشم میتوانم که تا ته دنیا میتوانم تمام این شبها مست باشم ته هوا ای ما تا همیشه مسافرت باشم یک قناری بوف کرده شوم زیر شلاق هات برده شوم میتوانم به خاطرت بروم میتوانم به خاطرت باشم توی این داستان که بد بشوی گریه و حبس تا ابد بشوی تا که از مرز و کوه رد بشوی بلد پشت قاطرت باشم تا که دیوی به منزلت آمد تا که دشمن مقابلت آمد هر کجا ترس در دلت آمد با تو در حال مشورت باشم هدف چند اتهام شوی لذتی تا ابد حرام شوی یک خیابان ناتمام شوی همه عمر آغرت باشم عشق رؤیای ماست خائن نیست هیچی با تو غیر ممکن نیست میتوانم تو را خیال کنم میتوانم که 
شاعرت باشم یا عمره باش بر تن سختم یا تیغ نصف داخل تختم یا سم بریز های درختم وقتی تبر وجود ندارد وقتی در انتهای زمینی وقتی که جز دروغ نبینی وقتی که در قفص بنشینی انگار هر وجود ندارد گفتن پشت هر در بسته آزادی است و قفل شکسته گفتن پشت هر در بسته دیدیم در وجود ندارد گفتیم شد چشم تری نیست گفتیم شد که خبری نیست از این شکنجه بیشتری نیست چون بیشتر وجود ندارد حرف از نگاه شعل برش زد از آرزوی بال و پرش زد یک روز یک نفر به سرش زد آن یک نفر وجود ندارد یک تیت صبح تازه نمیده یک تیت مرده است سپیده در روز نامی که رسیده متن خبر وجود ندارد یا یا گریه ها یا وقت فراری یا صبر و انتظار بهاری از هر نظر وجود نداری از هر نظر وجود ندارد چیزی بگو از آتش و آغاز چیزی بگو از آتش و آغاز آزادی پرنده و آغاز یعنی به من امید بده با حتی اگر وجود ندارد با جیغ بی صدای کسی توی خواب ها من سال هاست قاطی این استراب ها چیزی نگو نخواه نپرس از جواب ها نگذار دستشان برسد به کتاب ها دارند میبرند مرا آه فاطمه این سایه ها گرد شده از کوچه کیستند دنبال اسم کوچک کی توی لیستن لطفا بگو که منتظر من نیستن اینها که محرم تو این خانه نیستن دارند میبرند مرا آه فاطمه از دابلای چادر مادر کت پدر از عکس های بچه گیم چشم های تر از خاطرات در بغلت گیر قوت برهی می کشند پیرهنم را به سمت در دارند می برند مرا آه فاطمه نگذار حس کنند تو ترس توت را نگذار بشنوند صدایا که بوت را نگذار بغز پر کند از غم گلوت را از من نخواه خواب نبینم سقوط را دارند میبرند مرا آه فاطمه در گریه مثل ماهی گیجی شناوری آشفت موی وحشیت از زیر روسری یک لحظه بیست تکان نخور میخواهم در ذهنم حفظت کنم میدانم میامی و یک روز از این شکنجه مرا در میآوری دارند میبرند مرا آه فاطمه از روزهای دل هره در انتظارمی مثل دو چشم خیره به در بیقرارمی زنجیر موی بافته راه فرارمی حس می کنم همیشه تر از هر کنارمی 
دارند میبرند مرا آه فاطمه and I prefer to show a video clip uh, instead of reading another poem that uh, its uh, poem is mine and uh, the singer is uh, Shaheen Najafi who got fatwa and uh, I talked about him and <laughs> I know it, uh, it has, unfortunately, it has no subtitle, but uh, I hope you feel the words. <laughs> Oh. 